the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed as one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For at the Gentiles, it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows what you need, but strive for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's troubles is enough for today. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Francis, the patron of our parish, is known for many things during his life. As a young man, Francis decided that his claim to fame would be through military prowess. At that time, Israel, Italy was not a united country, but numerous city-states, each with its own royalty and their own armies. There were constant battles between these political entities, and Francis was sure he would distinguish himself in battle. But he was injured in battle and had a lengthy convalescence, during which the only reading materials he had were the Bible and a book on the saints. This reading inspired him and led him to experience a call from God to embrace a life of poverty and to preach the good news. It began with a simple renunciation of his wealth, the wealth of his father, a prosperous cloth merchant in Assisi. This brought him rejection from his father and most of the elite of Assisi. Francis and his earliest companions even walked to Rome, 162 kilometers, to see Pope Innocent III to ask if he was doing God's will. The rest is history. In 2019, Francis sailed across the Mediterranean, determined to visit the Sultan al-Kamil of Egypt to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with him. In the midst of the Fifth Crusade, somehow Francis was allowed to pass through the enemy lines and meet the Sultan. The Sultan himself was a religious man, a devout Muslim, who also had embraced a simple lifestyle like Francis. He was fascinated by the witness of Francis for making the trip and for the faith-filled way he shared the story of Jesus Christ. He was not converted to Christianity during the two weeks together, but they formed bonds of mutual respect. Another famous story of Francis was involving the wolf. The people of the town of Gubbio called upon him to come to their town as they were being terrorized by a wild wolf who had even killed a few children. Francis walked out of the town and saw the wolf which came charging at him. Francis made the sign of the cross and the wolf stopped dead in his tracks. Francis said, "'Come here, brother wolf, I command you on behalf of Christ,' that you do no harm to me or to anyone. And indeed, the wolf was tamed. This story is depicted in the statue of St. Francis in the vestibule of our church. Our readings today reflect these characteristics of the life of St. Francis of Assisi. In our first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 6 to 1, God reveals the call to care for the hungry and the homeless. He became light who breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. St. Francis lived a life of charity in his dedication to the poor and in his outpouring of love to all God's creation. Indeed, even today, as patron of ecology and the environment, he is like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose water never fails. His testimony of life calls us into harmony with all of creation. St. Francis, at the age of 43, in 1224, received the stigmata, the wounds of Christ in his hands, feet, and side. In our second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 6, verses 14 to 18, St. Paul writes, I carry the marks of Jesus branded on my body. This was a sign of his holiness and his sharing in the sufferings of Christ during the last two years of his life. Our gospel leads us into a beautiful reflection on our patron saint. We see his deep deep faith and confidence in the Father throughout his life and mission. He had no fear as he knew that God would provide as he did for the birds of the air and the lilies and the grass of the field. We see his union with nature in his famous canticle as he wrote of Brother Son, 
Sister Moon and Stars, Brother Wind and Air, Brother Fire, and Sister Mother Earth. St. Francis felt a oneness, a unity with creation, and praised God for its beauty. This unity with God led to his harmony with all creatures, human and animal. That is why he is so often pictured, as in our stained glass window over the front entrance, with a variety of creatures who reflected for him the glory and majesty of God. So to what is God calling us as we celebrate the feast of our patron saint, St. Francis of Assisi? The words over the entrance to our church reads, We are a Christ-centered faith community seeking to be instruments of God's peace. Like St. Francis, we are called to follow God's call as disciples and stewards, bringing Christ and his grace into every encounter, every friendship, every occasion, and every action. St. Francis believed, believed that living a life of simplicity was central to his response to God, recognizing the generosity of God and the beauty of his creation. Our parish distinguishes itself with its care and concern for the environment, with our Lodato Sea Group, our parish gardens, and our participation in environmental and ecological groups and projects. Like St. Francis, we are called to work in harmony with one another, bringing the peace of Christ to others. The prayer of St. Francis invites us to be instruments of peace. As a parish community, we strive to provide a welcoming environment for new parishioners and people new to Canada, reflecting and celebrating the diversity of our church and the richness that each person brings to the community. We may not be as bold as St. Francis and travel across the desert to share the gospel with the Sultan, but each of us is called to share the good news of Jesus with one another, in particular those who are seeking faith and a deeper union with God. As we celebrate the feast of our patron, St. Francis of Assisi, we renew our commitment to Christ, to the spirit of St. Francis, and pledge ourselves once again to celebrate the beauty and majesty of God's creation in nature, animals, and most especially in one another.